Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome. So today we have Ali Ur, and he is going to talk about on the numerical solutions of some inverse source problems backward in time. Ali Ur, thanks for accepting our invitation and being with us today. And we are listening to you, please. Thank you very much. Uh, um, but, uh, dear professors, dear colleagues, dear friends, welcome to all. Um, uh, before I start, I'd like to thank the organizers of this seminar series for giving me this chance to present my uh, study here. Um, let me uh, start with uh, the outline of my talk. Um, I will start with introduction and motivation. Then I will give main results, numerical method, then uh, numerical experiments and discussions. And finally, I will give summary and concluding remarks. Actually, uh, this uh, talk is based on my uh, recent uh, study, uh, which is a, continu a continuation of my previous works. In this work, I also study multidimensional case. And uh, uh, I uh, modified uh, the problem I considered before from uh, different angles. Perhaps this slide is not necessary for uh, such a seminar series, but let's talk about it anyway. Uh, let's compare direct problems and inverse problems for partial differential equations. And for this purpose, let us consider this initial boundary value problem for uh, the standard heat equation. Uh, for example, in this, uh, if in this problem, the only unknown is u, then this problem is a direct problem. On the other hand, in addition to u, if we have some missing parameters like the uh, source or uh, the coefficient k or m or phi, then this problem becomes an inverse problem. In fact, in the literature, such problems are called as identification problems. For example, if the right-hand side function f is unknown in addition to u, then this problem is called as source identification problem. Or, for example, if k or m is unknown, then this problem is called as coefficient inverse problem or coefficient identification problem. And similarly, if phi is unknown, then this problem is called as a condition identification problem. Of course, in order to identify this uh, unknown uh, parameter, missing parameter, we need to be given one additional condition, which is called as overdetermination. Of course, um, this condition might be given in different forms like local conditions, just like in my uh, case here. In the problem I will consider, we have a local uh, overdetermination, or we might be given some uh, non-local condition, non-local overdetermination, for example, integral condition. So uh, if we uh, dive into uh, source identification problems, uh, the, such uh, problems are taking lots of attention uh, from the uh, researchers. For example, if we consider this partial differential equation here, we have a separable source on the right-hand side. So we have this multiplicative form of the source P of T and Q of X. So if Q is known, but P is unknown, again, in addition to U, of course, then this problem is called as time-dependent source identification problem. So here I present some of the works, recent works, dealing with uh, such uh, uh, problems. In these papers, in these publications, the authors examined uh, or investigated such problems from different aspects, existence, unique, existence and uniqueness of the solution or stability of the solutions or some numerical methods are uh, proposed, etc. Similarly, if P is known, but Q is unknown, I mean, if the unknown source term is space-wise, then it is called a space-dependent source identification problem. And again, I present here some recent works related to that. As the third case, or uh, uh, if we say non-separable or unsteady source identification, as you see here, instead of P of T times Q of X, we have a uh, how to say, combined function f of tx. 
as a matter of fact, this case is a, a more uh, complicated than the previous. And uh, I feel like I should mention this uh, paper uh, specifically because this is a recent work and uh, it filled a big gap in the uh, literature here. Why? Uh, the authors uh, considered a three-dimensional parabolic uh, problem and uh, regarding uh, unsteady source, ide source identification problem. And also they uh, offered, they proposed a very efficient numerical method for the solution of such uh, non-separable source identification problem. This, uh, similar things can be said for the second paper as well, but since this is more recent, I, I wanted to mention about this. And also, uh, like we discussed before, we may have uh, coefficient identification problems. Again, I present here some recent works and some more papers involving inverse problems for partial differential equations. Uh, in some of these papers, we have some models, uh, some uh, problems, inverse problems, uh, modeling some real life problems like COVID epidemic or uh, heat conduction uh, process or uh, population dynamics, etc. So after uh, such a uh, literature, uh, literature uh, review, uh, let's talk about the motivation of this recent work, I mean, this present work. So, uh, if uh, in this slide, let's talk about the difference between Fourier heat conduction and non Fourier heat conduction. As you see in this uh, heat equation, uh, this is, uh, the, the, I guess, the simplest version, we have this term K over rho C, which is called as thermal conductivity. Uh, which is generally is supposed to be positive normally in classical sense, but especially after the usage of composite materials in industry and engineering, some non-classical cases had to be considered. For example, what happens if we have a nanomaterial and if we heat up this material, nanomaterial, by a, uh, by a high power laser, especially for a very short time. So this nanomaterial gets uh, colder instead of getting uh, hotter. This is an interesting case. Of course, of course, uh, there are some other more complicated models or uh, uh, problems uh, or differential equations modeling such a process, but I consider here the, uh, one of the simplest cases. So this is one aspect. Uh, we are going to talk about uh, a problem that, mo uh, that is related to non-classical uh, model of uh, heat conduction or diffusion process. Uh, perhaps uh, we can give another example to such a, a situation. For example, if we think an atom, uh, for example, if we give energy to an atom, we can just take one electron out of it when we give this uh, energy to atom, we, uh, we expect it to have more uh, energy, right? But since the electron is moved away, it becomes more stable and its energy, self-energy becomes less. So it's kind of uh, such a situation. Another aspect in this uh, work is uh, considering time in backward. I mean, uh, differential equations backward in time, again, takes a lot of uh, attention by the, uh, from the uh, researchers, especially engineers. For example, imagine you have a system or process, you want to identify the in initial state or initial condition, so you need to move backward in time. So in this study, I will combine these two cases and I will study a problem. So here I present this problem, but this is uh, the problem, how to say, let me say core problem or abstract problem for the target problem. Let me go forward and show you, uh, the, for example, this is, uh, the, the, this is one of the problems I want to consider. So this is a parabolic equation involving this P of X, which is the unknown uh, space-wise uh, source term. And we are given this uh, condition, additional uh, condition over determination subject to this Dirichlet type boundary condition. 
So for the theoretical considerations or namely uh, stability estimates or numerical for the pro uh, proposition of numerical aspect, I would like to consider that abstract problem. This abstract problem, in fact, uh, is a core problem for uh, not just that par one dimensional parabolic equation, also a multi dimensional case, perhaps even uh, other types of problems. So when we obtain uh, theoretical considerations or theoretical, re theoretical results, then we can apply them on some other problems as well. So instead of uh, considering just one problem, I just consider this abstract problem uh, for which uh, we can extend the results to other problems. So as you see, we have this operator here, uh, A. A is a linear operator such that minus A is the generator of the analytic semigroup exponential minus T A, uh, satisfying this exponentially uh, decreasing norm. As a matter of fact, uh, this uh, this is a way to say that A is a positive operator in this Banach space, another verse to say. So as you see, we have this parameter P, which is to be identified along with a, a U. And for this purpose, we are given this uh, overdetermined condition. T1, by the way, is in this interval. If it is different than zero, then uh, at the end of the day, we will be able to identify the initial condition as well. So uh, uh, in this paper here in number one, this very uh, abstract problem was studied and the well poseness of this problem was established in a Banach space. So what is uh, we are adding to the liter literature here? Uh, we are adding numerical aspect for this problem. We are going to propose a finite difference method uh, for the numerical solution of this problem and of course its applications. So for the theoretical considerations, we define this Banach space, which is the uh, Banach space of all abstract continuous functions defined on a zero to T <clears throat> and with values in E with this norm by, we denote it by this notation. Throughout this uh, presentation, you will see some case of I and its arguments. This defines positive constants depending only on these arguments. So in this first theorem, we give a stability estimate or uh, uh, for the solution of uh, abstract problem. So uh, the, in, the conditions are supposed to be some elements from the Banach space and F is supposed to be from this space then this problem, differential problem, I'm sorry, abstract problem will have a unique solution as uh, satisfying this estimate. Uh, this uh, theorem has a pitfall because in this one, we are giving estimate along with U, A inverse P, not directly to P. Uh, in our next th uh, theorem, we will provide, uh, how to say, a more, uh, more useful, uh, estimate. So uh, for the uh, proof of this theorem, we are going to use these two estimates. These are well-known estimates, which are uh, given in this uh, book, for example, or some other uh, papers or books, etc. So uh, firstly, we need to express the solution of uh, the, the, the abstract problem. Let me go back. And if we multiply this differential equation here by an integrating factor. And if we uh, integrate both sides, then we end up with this uh, integral representation of the solution. And if we separate this term P and we get this <clears throat> formula for the function U, then we need to find the function, uh, I'm sorry, formula for P. For this purpose, we use the given uh, over determination, you know, so if we put T equals to T1 and leave A inverse P alone, then we end up with this formula for A inverse P. And if we plug that, this formula into the last formula and we obtain this formula for U, then using, <clears throat> I'm sorry, 
applying Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, tri triangle inequality, and those well-known estimates, we end up with this uh, stability estimates or estimate for A inverse P. Analogously, analogously, we do the same for U of T and end up with this same, in fact, with different coefficient, of course, estimate. Then when we combine them, when we add them up, we complete the proof of the last theorem. This is the one I was talking about. This theorem is uh, more useful, uh, reflects, uh, uh, reflects our results. This time, <clears throat> phi and psi, the conditions are from domain of A, and F is uh, from the space of continuously differentiable uh, functions, final space of all continuously differentiable uh, functions with values in E. And as you see, we are giving estimate for P itself, uh, operator uh, AU a and derivative of U all together. So this is more accurate, let me say. So uh, <clears throat> again, the proof of this theorem follows from the same idea. We just apply, uh, we just apply A to, let me go back here, right? If we apply A to both sides of this formula, then we get this, I'm sorry, yeah. And again, uh, we have to apply integration by parts here. And after all, we obtain this estimate. Or P. And analogously, again, we take the derivative of U with respect to T, and after some calculations and those similar ideas, then we end up with this stability estimate. So again, this completes the proof of the last theorem. So uh, the differential part is finished now. Now we are going to talk about the different scheme we are going to uh, propose and the stability estimates for this numerical, uh, I'm sorry, different, different scheme as well. Uh, as you see here, again, we keep the uh, AH, the, which is the discrete form of the operator, and we have uh, this different scheme. Uh, in, the, in the derivation of the stability estimates, we uh, I used some uh, ideas from this book and these two papers. So, <clears throat> again, this is the other, uh, this is the discrete analog of the Banach space and the discrete, discrete analog of the uh, norm. We denote C tau E H by this Banach space. So again, these are again the, the discrete analog of analogs of uh, the estimates, those well-known estimates which are given in these two papers again, and uh, we define this operator which will be used later on. Uh, I don't want to bore you, so I, I'm going very quickly. So again, we have this estimate. So uh, perhaps you noticed that in, in these coefficients, we have this delta. So this delta uh, is changing with respect to the operator. For example, if we are talking about a uh, one dimensional uh, operator, then this is different. Or if we are talking about multi-dimensional case, it's different. So this coefficient K will differ with respect to the operator, of course. So uh, if we arrange the a dif difference equation in the different scheme, then we end up with this formula here. And if we use this recursive formula from one to N, we end up with this formula here. And again, if we apply this overdetermined condition and leave a H inverse P alone, then we end up with this formula and also this formula for U. Then, Applying these uh, ideas, I mean, triangle inequality, Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, and those well-known estimates, then we end up with the, uh, this estimate for AH inverse B and UK minus one. 
again, combination of those two will uh, yield, uh, we will complete the proof. And here we have, perhaps uh, this is important. I mean, I, I need to explain this more. So uh, different than the previous cases, here we present in, in this estimate, we present almost coercive stability estimate. So this part is <clears throat> different than the previous. And th th this is in fact a uh, continuation of the differential part. So uh, we are here uh, proposing uh, deriving two, two different types of stability estimates. So I just skip the proof of that part because I don't, as I said, I don't want to bore you. So how do we proceed to obtain the numerical solutions, right? Uh, let me go back to here. We want to solve, we want to apply this numerical difference scheme, finite difference scheme. So we have two unknowns, U and P. So in the implementation of this difference scheme, we first aim to find a numerical solution or approximate solution for P. Once we find it, we will plug it here and this difference scheme will become direct and then solve it for U. So how do we do that? So we apply this substitution. So U will be uh, obtained from this formula here. So if we apply this substitution on the given, uh, let me say final condition, terminal condition, then if we leave P alone here, send this term to the right-hand side, uh, multiply both sides by AH. So we end up with this. This phi, psi is given in the problem. So we need to find this. What is this? Uh, the, these values will be obtained from, this, uh, from the solution of uh, this different scheme, auxiliary different scheme, let me say. So as you see in this different scheme, we don't have P, we just need to solve it. This is a direct different scheme. We will find the values or approximate solution of this different scheme. Then using those values in here, we will find P. Then we will plug that into our uh, different scheme. We will find U. This is the process we will be uh, following. So uh, let us apply our uh, theoretical findings and also uh, the numerical difference scheme on some application problems. So here we define our uh, domain or uh, region. So here I define uh, n dimensional case where n is greater than or equal to one, the differential and discrete cases. <clears throat> and also the Banach space or Lebesgue space, we generally use here LP in the literature, but since I have this parameter P, I don't want to uh, be confused. Uh, so I, I used Q here, but uh, Q needs to be different than two because e when Q is two, it's Hilbert space, you know? So we are defining these um, norms for the differential case. And this is the Sobolev space. And again, Banach space and this norm. And uh, the discrete cases are given here. Then this is the first application. So this operator here, one dimensional case, is a particular form of that operator A. So if we consider that uh, abstract problem uh, in the view of this operator, then we will end up with this problem uh, a parabolic, uh, uh, for parabolic uh, differential equation. And it is backward in time, as I mentioned, the T is starting from capital T. So uh, we are comprising uh, several uh, concepts, you know. So uh, here, uh, A is a positive function. F, uh, phi, and psi are given sufficiently smooth functions. And we are going to identify U and P. So again, uh, for the numerical aspect, we are defining the discrete uh, form of the operator. So given by this formula. So we propose this uh, different scheme for that problem, one dimensional for one dimensional parabolic equation backward in time. So we want to solve this inverse because it involves P 
uh, inverse difference scheme. So we need to find Pn following that idea, we will find that. But just before that, we just apply, we just extend our results for the abstract problem or abstract difference scheme for this application. Uh, again, we apply them in these spaces, in the proper spaces. We give this uh, almost coarsive stability estimate and this stability estimate. And um, also, this is the second uh, application, a uh, multidimensional case, in fact. Uh, similar to the previous case, one dimensional case, we have this, we are considering this problem here, a multidimensional and dimensional case. So uh, I'm going to speed up a bit. The, this is the discrete analog of that. And here we are proposing this different scheme for the numerical solution of multidimensional problem. Again, we, pro uh, we uh, provide this stability estimates, almost coercive and normal stability estimates. And now uh, we come to numerical experiments and discussions. So for, uh, for the uh, observation of the efficiency of the method or convergence of the uh, results, we consider, we will consider two uh, model problems. Well, one is for one dimensional, one is for two dimensional. Here we take uh, into, uh, we, we consider this problem whose exact solution is exponential minus T sinus X and P is exponential minus X. So uh, as promised before, we applied the given proposed difference scheme on this example. So as I said before, we need to find P first. So for that matter, we are going to use that formula, which is the application of, which is the application of that, uh, let me go back here, this idea, you know, I'm sorry. Right. So we are going to use this formula to find the approximate solution of P. And for this purpose, we need to find these values from this auxiliary difference scheme. So for the derivation of the numerical solution of this different scheme, we are going to give the matrix realization. At this point, I may write this different scheme in the matrix form as AU equals to F, for example, the simplest case. But instead of that, I wrote that in this form here uh, and, apply, and apply modified Gauss elimination method. Why is that? Because when we write it, it, when, when we write that different scheme in the form a u equals to f, uh, we will have to deal with a very large matrix, and we will have to take. I mean, the softwares will have to take uh, the inverse of that large matrix. So it takes lots of CPU time. Instead of that, I I, I wrote that different scheme in this matrix form, and uh, it reduced the CPU time. So as you see here, we have coefficient matrices uh, changing with respect to N because since, let me go back, since we are using a variable coefficient, it, they change with respect to N. So we have these alpha Ns and beta Ns and F N. So once we solve it uh, by modified Gauss elimination method, let me give the procedure of modified Gauss elimination method here. So uh, we are going to apply this formula for Vn. The, uh, since we have the Richelieu boundary conditions, V0 and Vm are known as zero vectors. So in this formula, we have alpha and beta. Those matrices are obtained from these formulas, starting with zero matrices. Again, this, these two are coming from the Dirichlet boundary condition V0 equals to zero. So we will find alpha and beta here, alpha Ns and beta Ns, then plug them here and find V and use them to find P and then plug that into 
different scheme and find u. And for that purpose, once we plug Pn, uh, we will have such a matrix representation. In the same manner with the V, we solve it by modified Gauss elimination method and uh, obtain the numerical results. In this table, we give error analysis for uh, specific values of N and M. So uh, this different scheme was first order of accuracy. So as we, as we halve uh, the uh, step size, we expect to have uh, the error decreased by approximately one over two, which happens here. So error with respect to U, error with respect to B, error with respect to the initial condition. Since the condition is not given at T equals to zero, we also needed to find the initial condition. So the, the, this row gives us the error um, analysis for initial condition as well. And these are the formulas we obtained uh, these headers from. So here we present some graphs as well. This is the graph of uh, uh, exact and approximate solutions of U when N and, and, M, and, and M are 160. And uh, here in this figure, we have approximate and exact initial conditions. And here we have uh, exact and approximate uh, solutions for P. They look identical, but uh, when you make it larger, I mean, zoom in, then you will see the difference, but they, they are very accurate. And uh, <clears throat> as the second example, we consider this two-dimensional problem, variable coefficients and uh, two-dimensional problem. Again, the, the second condition, overdetermined condition is not given at the initial time. And uh, following the uh, similar process, we propose this numerical difference scheme, finite difference scheme. We will obtain the values of P from this formula. Uh, and those values for uh, V will be obtained from this difference scheme. Again, we write it in matrix form as here, but this time we have log matrices in the coefficient matrices. Uh, as a matter of fact, this was a bit uh, challenging because we have this variable coefficients and these, these block matrices are changing all the time with respect to those variable coefficients. It was a bit challenging to you know, construct these matrices for the numerical results. And again, we have these uh, three band matrix and um, I present the matrices. Again, we apply the modified Gauss elimination method and um, more matrices. And we give, we present the numerical results. Here again, uh, errors with respect to U, P, and I. We have, uh, perhaps I should mention here, since we are dealing with a two dimensional case, our matrices were larger. And uh, after 80, I, I tried, for example, 160, but it took a long time, uh, let me say. So I didn't try for that, but uh, it, worked, it worked just fine. And again, we obtained those values from these formulas. Here, uh, I present the graphs. So here we, uh, we give the graphs of initial conditions at u0, u0 xy and approximate solution on the right hand side and uh, exact and approximate solutions when n and m are 40. And uh, let me give the summary and concluding remarks. So in this study we have dealt with a class of uh, inverse source problems backward in time. Uh, uh, we, uh, as I mentioned before, we have considered that uh, abstract problem and uh, we have uh, derived the uh, theoretical, uh, th theoretical results and applied them on some application problems. And then we have given uh, an, a, an explicit difference scheme and uh, we provided stability estimates for the solutions of uh, those explicit different schemes. And uh, we have given numerical discussions. 
perhaps I, uh, I need to add this. Uh, recently, again, after this work, uh, after this study, I am working on another different scheme for the same problems. But like I said, when you make step sizes very small, it takes lots of time. I want to have uh, more accurate results with uh, larger step sizes. So uh, I need to have more accurate uh, different schemes or other numerical methods. I'm currently working on that. And uh, in fact, I have an idea on that. Uh, let's see, in future, hopefully, uh, I find another option to uh, time to uh, present that work as well. Thank you all for uh, your attention. Thank you, Elur. Excellent presentation, excellent talk. I really appreciate your hard work. Thanks so much. Thank Any you. questions, anyone? Nebosha, Burak, Selin, Kurdistan. Yes, uh, also I want to thank you for the presentation. I think it is very interesting. Yeah. Also, uh, I have a little question actually. Uh, I think that I missed some uh, condition for this operator A, mm -hmm. uh, the big A. What uh, this operator, what it can be actually? I, I'm sorry, I couldn't get your question exactly. Yes. Could you please? Some, just. Uh, just uh, I want to know um, some um, how it said uh, some information about this operator A. Yes, yes here. Uh, I see your point. This is a general operator in this case. We are giving a general idea. Uh, it just needs to uh, satisfy these two conditions. Basically, when an operator uh, uh, satisfies these two uh, estimates, let me say, and also being the generator, minus A being a, the generator of analytic semi-group, then this uh, operator will definitely be a, a, a positive operator. Basically, the condition is uh, for A to be positive in this Banach space. If we consider, for example, a, if we consider this uh, abstract problem in a Hilbert space, it will be positive definite operator. And perhaps uh, depending on the a purpose, it might need to be uh, self-adjoint as well. Okay, thank you very much. No problem. I think it is a huge result. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? No. Okay, thank you again so much, Adur. Thank you, professors. And thank you for attending everyone and see you next time. Okay, thank See you. Bye-bye.